Coming up on this edition of Southwest TV News. Last Wednesday, a lone gunman shot and killed Corporal Nathan Frank Cirillo while standing guard at the National War Memorial in Ottawa. On any given day in Southwest Saskatchewan, there are anywhere from 16 to 20 youth between the ages of 14 and 18 without housing. School is back in full swing for Saskatchewan students. And despite the posted speed limit of 40 kilometers per hour and digital speed reading signs, motorists are still breaking the law. Thanks for joining us here today. A week after the shooting on Parliament Hill and Canadians are remaining firm in their stance against terrorism. We get local reaction in this report. It's a scene no one would expect on Canadian soil. Yet last Wednesday, a lone gunman shot and killed Corporal Nathan Frank Cirillo while standing guard at the National War Memorial in Ottawa. The suspect then entered the Parliament building firing shots and was later killed. As the nation's capital continues to be on high alert and increased security measures are in place at legislative buildings across the country, many are still asking the questions of why and how this could happen in Canada. Oh, it was uh, really unbelievable. It was just about as bad as those airplanes that knocked out New York. Something like that would happen, but they got to be ready for it, though. For sure, like you, that's the last thing that, you, that you'd expect. But considering what happened the day before in Quebec, um, and obviously those events are, or two days before in Quebec, those events are, are, are similar, so that's kind of maybe inspiring crazy people to do violent things. So we do have to be vigilant against that. While for others, like Stephanie Kaduck, the day hit closer to home, with several family members employed by the government in Ottawa. And now going forward, she says she won't change her day-to-day -day routine. I don't think anybody should change their lives. I think that we are strong and free, and we have to act like it. Um, there are probably going to be other incidents, but we can't hide under our beds in fear, waiting for something to happen. Similar sentiments echoed by those who work on Parliament Hill. Well, I think we're bound and determined that Canada isn't going to change because of incidents like this. Uh, the House of Commons is meeting today, and I'm on duty today, so I'll be in the House of Commons all day. And there's a feeling that we, we need to go ahead, and we're going to do that. I think, um, obviously, our, our thoughts and prayers are mostly with the family of, of young Corporal Cirillo, that uh, their lives will be impacted forever by this. So we need to uh, keep them in mind and, and uh, give them our prayers as best we can. And for the youth who may have questions of this incident in the coming days, school divisions such as Chinook have certain protocols in place. And we have counselors and we have a number of support personnel available in schools so that if a classroom teacher did feel uncomfortable or wasn't sure about how to handle some questions coming from students, they would be very readily available. As we remember this fallen soldier on home soil, this year's Remembrance Day will likely take on a new meaning for many as we continue to appreciate our freedom and give thanks for those who have given the ultimate sacrifice for us all. Them. Saskatchewan is not just a great place to be from, it is a great place to be. The Southwest Emergency Youth Shelter has its eye on winning $100,000 in the Aviva Community Fund Contest, and they're counting on your online support. On any given day in Southwest Saskatchewan, there are anywhere from 16 to 20 youth between the ages of 14 and 18 without housing. These boys and girls are sleeping in cars, tents, parks, and couches, sometimes turning to dangerous or illegal behaviors to gain access to food, clothing, and shelter. With no permanent address, many of these youth are unable to find work or go to school, leaving them without the skills and education to support themselves. Homeless youth are more likely to suffer from depression, anxiety, drug abuse, and chronic health issues. It is for these reasons the Southwest Youth Emergency Shelter Incorporated was formed. To provide a support system for the disadvantaged youth living in our own backyard. Southwest Youth Emergency Shelter Incorporated plans to establish a shelter in Swift Current with space for six to eight residents to help these hidden homeless find a safe, accepting place to stay. Well, hidden homeless has been an ongoing issue in Swift Current uh, for a number of years and there's been various studies and proposals dating back as far as 1998, I believe, that, uh, to try and tackle the issue. And I'm really confident with 
the establishment of this organization and their vision and this project that will uh, be able to work towards a, a permanent solution to this issue in our community. The primary way we can take that first step is through the Aviva Community Fund competition. The Aviva Community Fund uses votes from supporters like you to help projects and initiatives across Canada to get off the ground. To help make the dreams of many young people across the southwest a reality, go to avivacommunityfund.org, register an account, and place your vote for the Emergency Shelter for Homeless Youth. Every vote gets us one step closer to having somewhere these at-risk youth can call a home. Southwest Saskatchewan needs your help. Just one vote can help change a life. Do your part. Vote today. You're reminded to slow down when driving through a school zone. That's an ongoing message from policing agencies and SGI. We have more in this report. School is back in full swing for Saskatchewan students. And despite the posted speed limit of 40 kilometers per hour and digital speed reading signs, motorists are still breaking the law. The latest traffic blitz in the province resulted in 760 drivers receiving tickets for speeding through school zones. Overall numbers, which police and SGI say, is unacceptable. School zones are particularly risky because of the vulnerability of children in those areas. Um, and really, if, you, if you're driving too fast, you're driving above the speed limit, it just means that it's going to take you that much longer to react to any kind of a hazard. So let's say a child darts out in front of you. It may be too late. By the time you slam on your brakes, you may have already hit the child if you're speeding. So um, we would just caution people to slow down and stay alert and, and be scanning the road for any kind of hazards. Speeding in a school zone can result in a fine of at least $190 and three demerit points under SGI's Safe Driver Recognition Program. Unless otherwise posted, the approved speed limit in school and playground zones is 40 kilometers per hour. Well, this brings to a close another episode of Southwest TV News, reporting the stories that matter to you. We always welcome your news tips. You can always reach us here by phone at our studio or by email to contact us at southwesttvnews.com. Also, be sure to join us daily online for the latest news from across Southwest Saskatchewan and so much more at mylocaltv.ca. And be sure to follow us on a range of social media. Thanks for joining us here today. I'm Carol Andrews.